So now we look at Delve a little deeper and understand what is crime or try to understand how crimes are designated, how certain things are designated are crime. So the Code of Hammurabi, which was given in 1750 BC, is one of the oldest criminal justice systems, 4,000 years old. Although it's different from, you know, Pakistan current uh, penal code or, or penal codes which are now applicable in other countries, there are some principles that are similar, even after 4,000 4, years ago. So there are, for example, substantive laws which tells us which, what is crime. Then there's the process, how uh, a person will be con convicted or punished. Then there is a idea of justice. So, so uh, the, the, the laws tell us what is the idea of justice in the whole legal system. And then finally, there is the justification of punishment. Why people are, are certain crimes are punished in a certain way and other crimes are punished in a different way. So these four principles are similar even after 4,000 years ago. Uh, after after 4,000 years. So studying criminal justice means that we answer certain questions. So these are what is crime? Who are the criminals? Why do we punish offenders? And how do we make sense of a criminal justice system? So first step, what is crime? So crime, one way to define crime is just to say that any, uh, when anyone breaks a law, he or she commits a crime. But that is uh, becomes more superfluous when we understand that different societies and countries have different uh, conducts designated as crime. So, for example, um, homosexuality is not a crime in many Western countries. Last year, uh, uh, in 2018, Indian Supreme Court also said that it is no longer a crime. It's crime in most other countries. So, uh, crimes change, even in, uh, society, crimes in society change. So, there was uh, many crimes which were previously designated as crimes are no longer uh, punished. In Pakistan, uh, the main source of law is constitution. Countries that don't have uh, constitutions have other sources of law. For example, England has common law or case law. So there is no universal designation of what is wrong and what is right. So in many countries, certain drugs are considered um, crime. Taking those or possession of certain drugs is considered a crime. In other countries, it's not. For example, it's a crime to have uh, a certain amount of cannabis uh, in the U.S., but it's not a crime in Netherlands. And then, of course, uh, countries are changing uh, their definition of crime. So, uh, drugs were, uh, some drugs may be criminalized in some countries 50 years ago, but they are not now. So, this is the relative nature of crime. And then there are, of course, as we proceed further and there are new technolo technological developments, new types of crimes. For example, credit ca card fraud was not a crime 50 years ago, but it is now a major crime in the Western countries because of the fact that most of the people now use credit cards and don't use cash. So this brings us to the conclusion or that why these, why certain, uh, certain conduct is considered crime in, 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 in some time, in some country and not uh, a crime in other countries. It is argued that crimes are designated by the powerful in the society. So if the interests of the powerful, if the interests of the rich are hurt, then those conducts those actions will be severely punished. Those will be designated as crimes and severely punished. And the example or 
the evidence of this is that petty crimes are punished more with imprisonment as compared to white collar crimes uh, which are not punished by imprisonment and people who have siphoned uh, billions of dollars are only given fines which they can easily pay. So this shows the differences between the two types of crime, crimes committed by the poor and crimes committed by the rich. Thank you.